Now, as you know, I did manage to break free from the constraints of what I described as a robot. And that robot, I'm sure many of you can understand what that is. You don't really know it's there, do you, until you try and break on, you try and move on. Or we talked about the glass ceiling, we're trying to move up in life. And somehow we just fail and we can't get there. And there doesn't seem to be any reason. Well, in this whole process of talking about the ego, which is the thing that encases us, and the true self, which, it's in, which is being encased, um, I thought it might be good if I give you some testimony. So, you know, what really happened to me all those years ago, like almost 40 years ago. Um, and the reason why I want to give that testimony is because when I came out of Borstal a long time before that, I, I was really, really out of control at that time. They, they couldn't do anything with me. And uh, they virtually threw me out of the place in the end. And I, I was really bad and I was lost and I was, you know, fighting against the whole world. You know, I couldn't accept anything and I hated everybody. It's a terrible place to be in. But after I got released, I remember sitting at my mother's kitchen table and almost in a daydream, I said, Do you know, there's something about my life. There's something ab about it all, even though it's so wrong and even though it's gone all the wrong way and I've made so many mistakes and it's been awful I just get this feeling there's a reason for it you know like as if I'm actually going to figure it out and in myself I knew that when I figured it out I knew that the keys that I found to change my life would become the keys for many others to change theirs that's why I do testimony I don't know how that works. It's magic, isn't it? You know, how can I? I've been to so many, I've spoken at thousands of meetings in all different countries and everything. And so, so many times, something happens to somebody that is so magical, so amazing, and it, and it helps them to move on or break out or find a massive big answer. And it's inexplicable. So I'm going to give you some testimony here. I'll keep it quite short. But it's, it's a real life thing that I went through. As you know, I felt in Grendon, in the prison where we did the therapy, that my true self was trapped inside of a robot, and the robot was made by myself. And it's what we call the ego, an ego personality. And it's kind of cobbled together. It's not real. We think it's real, but it's not. It's just a cobbled together personality. And it's not even worth anything, but we seem to identify with it, and we really don't know how to do without it. And the ego will fight and fight to keep itself there, you know. And, um, and the poor <laughs> little real self on the inside doesn't get much of a chance. Anyway, as you know from the previous talks, I expressed this to the, to the community in the prison and said, I'm frustrated because, you know, I feel trapped. You know, the, the, the prison I'm trapped in is worse than being in a, in a physical prison, you know. Because this one's killing me. It's destroying my life. And I, I just, I'm, I'm stuck. I don't know how to get out. A couple of nights later, I was on a uh, therapy group called Psychodrama. It's something that people could volunteer for. And I, I was there in the evening. And uh, the therapist that was in the room when I'd uh, expressed my frustration a couple of days previous. And so she invited me to use the group that night. And the first thing she did was, was have the guys build a, a wall of chairs. And I was sat in the corner behind them. And she said, this is the wall that you've built in your life. Why did you build this? You know, what's it there for? And I was like, wow, I didn't know I had a big wall. But I, and when, the more I thought about it, I realized there was a big wall. And, and, and I was behind it, almost like behind the wall was, could have been the robot. And the person hiding behind is my true self, you know. And so the only thing I could think of, which was I knew was true, and I said, I just don't want to be hurt, you know. And so there was a kind of realization that all the aggression and all the fighting I'd done and all this sort of battling with the whole world, really, um, all of that, in a way, the root of it was like, I don't want anybody pushing me around and anybody hurting me, you know. So she said, when did you begin to build this wall? You know, where did it come from? And of course, it's very difficult to know. But as you know, in the previous talks, I did talk about like how we're so honest as children and we're, we are the true self at that point. And then the, the, the mind of a human tends to do something in, in adolescence to crush that young and lovely life out of existence and won't let it bring any expression anymore. 
and uh, and it's it's a kind of a mystery. I mean, there are reasons for that. I will talk about those things in later videos because it's fascinating to see why has the human race gone that way and why is it in the mess that it's in at the moment? And you can see the mess in the world. It's only going to reflect the mess that we're in. Um, so that's another story. And so I remembered an incident when I was a young boy. I was on the bus. I was an ordinary kid. I wasn't any more special than anyone else. Good at some things, not so good at others. Friends and blah, blah, blah. I can't remember. Maybe I was about um, eight years old, nine years old. And the bus was full and the rock, you know, we're all going home. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, as I was standing there, this punch hit me right in the nose, knocked me onto the floor on my back. And this bully, this older guy, was, was trying to get at me and he got onto me like this to beat me up. And everyone was saying, fight, fight, fight on the bus, you know, all the excitement. And I was just petrified, you know, I wasn't a fighter or anything like that. You know, I, I was just a kid. And, uh, but anyway, I, I, in order to just defend myself, I fought back and I started to beat him. And uh, I don't know how I did that because I didn't really know how to fight. But I started to beat him and I knocked him all up. And then the conductor came running down the steps stopped the bus, grabbed hold of me, I've got blood running down my face, my clothing's ripped, and he, and he threw me off the bus. <laughs> he thought I was the problem. He threw me off the bus, threw my bag at me, So and as, as the bus is taken off, I can still see it to this day, all these faces pressed against the glass at this fighter, someone who'd beaten up the bully at the school, somebody who dared, dared to fight him, you know. And... Um, and I said, all this blood on my face, his shirt was ripped, the bag was on the floor, and I looked a mess, you know. And, but one of the things that happened was, was that I noticed in the days that followed that, I was scared to see that bully again. But then I noticed he was scared to see me. I knew he was nervous of me. And I thought, that's weird, you know. And so I took advantage of that situation. And then I noticed girls took a bit more notice of me, and the guys had a bit more respect for me. And so having that guy be afraid of me, and my friends pay more respect for me, and the girls started to notice me, was a kind of recipe that I liked, but it was also a recipe for disaster, because I started pushing people around a little bit and started pushing my weight around. And what happened was, I, st I just started to be something that I wasn't. It was like an act, and I was already starting to create a mold uh, covering who I really was that was not true. And so on the psychodrama, what we did, just to keep it nice and short, um, we got the chairs and she made us reenact that ride home. And it's, it's astonishing when you're in a psychodrama how deeply, emotionally, you're back where you started, you're back in that situation. And so she picked a guy in the group to play the bully who I didn't particularly like. We didn't get on too well. So, <laughs> you know, she was clever at this. And so he became the bully and he's going you like that. And he was actually saying, he was going off, like off the um, script in a way, because he saw that what I was saying was, I'm not what you think, I'm not what anyone thinks. But now he wanted to take advantage of it. And he's saying, I knew you, I knew you weren't for real. I knew you were a phony. Look at you, come on, do you want to go like this? And, and I was like, so desperately wanting to stop him, you know. And she said, what do you want to do? And, I, and, and they were all teasing, shouting me, fight, fight. And he's on top. And you're back there, you know. And, and we went through it about six times. And every time we did it, I said, I don't want to fight with you. And he was getting more and more personal. And I was really getting more personal myself. And I said, no, I don't want to fight you. I don't want to fight with anybody, you know. And so when it seemed like we'd become exhausted and we couldn't go any further, um, the fateful thing happened. The wall of chairs was still over in the corner where I'd sat behind them. And she says, OK, guys, we really worked hard. Thank you so much. And she said to me, right, why don't you go back and sit behind the chairs again? And I said, OK. And, uh, and I, just, I went to stand up. I was leaning on one knee. And I can still see this and feel it to this day. I was about to get up and go over behind those chairs. She went, oh, no, no, no. You crawl. Oh, my God. And the guys were looking at me. They were just starting to roll cigarettes and they were looking at me. And I felt so humiliated. And I was thinking, oh my God, it's only 15 yards away. <laughs> That's the longest 15 yards of my life. And I thought, I can't do this. It was, just seemed impossible. But some voice inside of me said, this is what you've been looking for. This is your opportunity to break, to break the... the the horrible outer man because that's what he's made of it's his pride it's it's him you know 
and so I crawled. It was the worst thing I'd ever done in my life. And all I can say to you is uh, it felt exhilarating for me. I felt so released. I was so pleased. And not long after that, everything fell away. You know, you can talk about processes in life and processes in therapy and, and everything else, but there comes a point when you go so far and the whole thing falls apart, and I was free. But I just wanted to say that little testimony about a key moment on my progress because it was very important, and that's the step that I took. I had to be brave.